Hello, and welcome to today's program. I'm Diane Okonski, President of the Icelandic National League of the United States. Today, we will be introduced to the SNORI programs, which provide adults educational opportunities in Iceland and in North America. The INLUS is committed to providing programs like this, classes, and other offerings that create a connection point for Icelanders, those of Icelandic descent, and for those interested in Iceland. Information on the INLUS can be found on our website, www.inlus.org, uh, or through our social media sites, our blogs, and our newsletters. If you are not a member, I encourage you to join. Your membership helps fund scholarships, grants, and local programs and projects, and it would make a great, great, great gift for families and friends. So before we get started, I just have two reminders. First, the program is being recorded and will be available on the INLUS website. Again, that's INLUS.org. Second, all attendees are on mute, but if you would like to submit a question, please use the Q&A feature on Zoom, and we will answer as many questions as we can during the course of the program. With us today are Paula Halkram's daughter, Project Director for the Snorri Foundation in Iceland, and Jody Armand Jones, co director for the Snorri West program in the US. The Snorri West co director for Canada, Blair Lockhart, is unable to join us today, unfortunately. So, Paula, I understand you're going to get us started, so I will turn it over to you. Thank you. I guess I'll share my screen. So, yes, of course, Iceland is on your bucket list of places to visit. So, do it. But don't be a tourist, be a Snorri. Join our family of programs offering unique and unforgettable travel opportunities that connect North Americans and Icelanders with their relatives, heritage, and identity. Góan dag. And thank you for having us on this great platform and giving us the chance to talk about, explain, and perhaps answer questions about the Snorri programs. My name is Paula Hallgrimsdóttir, and I am the project manager in Iceland. I joined the team in February 2020 and has been introduced to the Snorri programs by FIRE. What a last couple of years it's been for everyone. I am very proud to continue the great work the Snorri programs has been doing for the last 20 years and look forward to continue strengthening the bonds between Icelanders and North Americans. Go then, die. And I am Jody Armand Jones from Farmington, Minnesota. I am a 2012 Snorri Plus alumna, a parent of a Snorri 2013, and the current co director of Snorri West program. My other co director in Canada is Blair Lockhart from Vancouver. She and her mom are alumni of the Snorri Plus program in 2014. And additionally, in 2019, Blair was the Snorri West organizer and hostess for Snorri West in Vancouver. We'd like to give you a very brief overview of the Snorri programs and invite you to ask any questions. Uh, Diane is monitoring the Q&A and she'll, ask, she'll let us know along the way whether or not uh, we can answer them at that time or hold them till the end. So the Snorri family of programs annually offers four different adventures depending upon your age and where you live. Snorri for 20 to 30 years old, North Americans of Icelandic descent. Snorri Plus is for those North Americans over 30 years of age. Snorri alumni internship is for alumni of both Snorri and Snorri Plus. And Snorri West brings Icelanders 20 to 30 years of age to North America. But the Snorri story, or saga if you prefer, begin as a joint initiative of the Icelandic Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Nordic Association, and the Na Icelandic National League of Iceland. It is currently overseen by the Not for Profit Snorri Foundation and its board of directors headquartered in Iceland. In 2019, the Snorri program celebrated its 20th anniversary. Snorri West, West did the same in 2021 while Snorri Plus will celebrate in 2023. But what's in the name? The name of the Snorri programs comes from Snorri Thorfinnsson, the son of Guðríður Thorbjarnardóttir and Thorfinnur Karlsefni, who sailed on many voyages around the Atlantic and was part of the settlement established in the areas often referred to as Vinland. 
A UNESCO World Heritage Site was established at Elens Ox Matos in Newfoundland, where it is believed Snorri was born in circa 1004 AD, making him the first known Icelander born in North America. Empathizing enduring ties between Iceland and North America, it is from this intrepid traveler that the Snorri programs take their name. The photo shown here is of Snorri and his mother and stands in the churchyard of Glöympar, the farm in northern Iceland near Hofsos, where the family settled once their voyaging days ended. But the first of the programs is Snorri, designed for North Americans of Icelandic descent, 20 to 30 years of age, to spend five weeks in Iceland during June and July. The trip is divided into three sections. Week one and two are in the capital region of Reykjavik, Weeks three and four are homestays for relatives anywhere in Iceland. And lastly, week five is a spectacular adventure trip to selected places around Greater Iceland. All Snorri participants are required to complete the free Icelandic online language course developed at the University of Iceland, Hauskoli Islands, before arrival in Iceland. Once in Reykjavik, they will continue with an intensive course in modern Icelandic. Snorri Plus is not required to complete the course ahead of time, but basic Icelandic language courses will be part of your early days in the, in the island. I had the opportunity to see Iceland and its people through the Snorri program. After two weeks of language classes, we understood words here and there, but there is a lot to learn before things start making sense. This is a quote from Logan. He participated in the Snorri program in 2018, a year later, or in the fall of 2019, he decided to move to Iceland and learn Icelandic. He still lives in Reykjavik and is enrolled in Háskóli Íslands, the University of Iceland. This is just one story of so many, how the Snorri program can change and influence the life of participants. Part of the Snorri program is to stay with an Icelandic family. Efforts will be made to place you with relatives who live in the geographical area where your ancestor once lived. During this time, Snorris will participate in everyday family life and take on a volunteer summer job equivalent to the jobs of young Icelanders usually have during the summer months. The Snorri program will take care of finding a host, family and arranging a volunteer placement, as well as provide a small stipend for spending money. Like we mentioned before, because of COVID, we have had to cancel our Snorri program two years in a row. Therefore, we might have to modify the program to increase participants and hosts' comfort level. Here's a look at where homestays have occurred throughout Iceland. As you can see, it is all over Iceland. And Snorri participants have come from nearly all Canadian provinces. Providence. And 21 of the United States. So in total, little over 300 Snorri participants since the beginning. Not only was my Snorri experience life-changing, it was one of the best experiences of my life. I am so grateful I had the opportunity to be part of something so magical. This is a quote from Amber. She was a Snorri participant in 2018 and comes from Hawaii. By contrast, Snorri Plus is designed for North Americans 30 years of age or over, to travel to Iceland alone with a spouse, family member, or friend. There is no requirement to be of Icelandic descent. This program spends two weeks in Iceland in August of each summer. Many of the experiences will be similar to those of Snorri, though there is no homestay. Snorri Plus takes part of the annual Reykjavik Marathon making a choice to do a three kilometer family walk, 10 kilometer fun run, half marathon, or a full marathon. Run, walk, or stroll, whatever suits you best. The rest of the marathon day and into the evening, Snorri Plus enjoys Reykjavik annual Menningarnótt, culture night, ending with a big show of fireworks. The next day, the group attends the annual meeting of the Icelandic National League of Iceland. We have spoken a bit about the differences between uh, Snorri and Snorri Plus.
but there are many similarities. At some point, assuming his schedule allows, you will be able to meet the president of Iceland, enjoy coffee and explore some of the historic treasures of the presidential home at Bessastaðir. Both programs enjoy expert speakers. During their introduction to the city of Reykjavík and Greater Iceland through a cultural and educational program on various subjects such as history, culture, introduction to the Icelandic language and geology. One never knows who might show up as an instructor. Here is Guðni Tjehá just prior to his election as president of Iceland, giving a lecture of, on economics in Iceland. Each participant of the Snorri and Snorri Plus of Icelandic descent will receive a family tree depicting past and present relatives in Iceland. See how they are connected to some of the Iceland's first settlers, a few famous Icelanders, as well as fellow Snorri or Snorri Plus participants and identif identify ancestor farms. Genealogy information is provided by Icelandic Roots and Íslendinga book, the Book of Icelanders. Both programs normally visit Drangey Island, across the fjord from Hofsos, where they visit the immigration center, along with other stops around Iceland. Both programs usually enjoy the world-famous Icelandic course up close and experience the unique Tölt Gate. Like many of you know, the Icelandic course is unique in a way that it has five gates. The other gate the Icelandic course is famous for is Skeið, or Pace. Not all Icelandic courses are capable of Pace, and they are usually called Fimgangshestar, or Five Gates Horses. The others, Four Gate Horses. Pace is written very fast and is a lot of fun to watch. Snorri Plus has welcomed over 200 participants since 2003, from 12 different states and five Canadian provinces. This is Jenny Fox, a Snorri Plus participant from 2017, here shown at the University of Iceland. As a direct result of her Snorri experience, she has been back in Iceland as a Fulbright specialist on behalf of Fulbright Iceland, continuing to work with Dr. Omar Christmanson, professor in political science, and Steinun Hrapsdóttir, professor in social science at Háskóli Íslands. She said herself, without the Snorri Foundation, none of this would have happened. I would still be spending evenings and weekends reading Halter Laxness or Icelandic folk tales and dreaming of a faraway place that I felt so connected to. And once you have had the experience of a lifetime, Snorri and Snorri Plus alumni are invited to continue their adventures as a Snorri alumni intern. The majority of expenses related to this summer long adventure are covered by the American and Canadian embassies in Iceland, the Icelandic Emigration Center at Hofsos, the Icelandic National League of Iceland and the Snorri Foundation. The Emigration Center is located on the Hofsos Harbour and the banks of the beautiful Hofsau River with a view of Drangey Island in the middle of Skagafjörður. As an intern, you will be given the opportunity to explore the surrounding area and other parts of Iceland too. Interns spend up to 12 weeks, primarily in Hofsos, where they will be given free accommodation and volunteer with the dedicated team of the Emigration Center, welcoming guests from all around the world and helping to fulfill the center's mission. They stay in Iceland, will start and end, with a homestay with Icelandic families in Reykjavik. In addition, the interns will work on projects developed in conjuncting with the US or Canadian embassy to help promote the strong cultural bonds between Canada, Iceland and the United States. Here we have Mallory Svansson. She was a Snorri participant in 2011, Snorri alumni intern in 2016, and is currently living in Reykjavik, studying at the University of Iceland. She spends her summer working for the Emigration Center at Hofsos, riding horses, among other things. <laughs> the beauty of horses and the experiences I had working at the Icelandic Emigration Center is something I will never forget. 
It was such a unique and wonderful way to spend the summer. And the final program is Snorri West, a unique four-week opportunity for Icelanders between the ages of 20 and 30 to follow the trails of their family members who emigrated from Iceland to North America. Snorri West co-directors in North America work with the project manager in Iceland who assists with and promotes the program. It is, however, a completely volunteer organized and operated enterprise, relying on the generosity of Western Icelanders to share their stories and those of their ancestors. We encourage you to participate in the program when it's in your area. The program would not be possible without the efforts and donations of North Americans just like you. Due to the size of the North American continent, we divided into four corridors named for the primary time zone and rotate to visit one corridor each summer. For the summer of 22, 2022, Snorri West plans to visit the central corridor of Minnesota, North Dakota, and Manitoba. And we are in discussion with Chicago, Washington Island, and possibly Milwaukee, Wisconsin also. Snorri West is advertised as a way for young Icelanders to one, explore Canada and the United States, two, discover the communities that Icelandic immigrants built, three, learn how Western Icelanders are keeping their Icelandic heritage alive, four, experience local culture, stories, and nature of each place they visit, five, improve their English and make lifelong friends. We've had as few as two and as many as nine young Icelanders participate in any one time. And we average about four per year in recent history. And that uh, is quite different from the Snorri and Snorri Plus programs that are probably averaging in the vicinity of about 15 or so every year. While the program is four weeks long in the summer, exactly when in the summer it happens depends on what's going on in the corridor to be visited any particular year. In 2022, in the central corridor, we will work around August the Deuce and Islandica Dagarin. Uh, the mountain corridor, which we hope is 2023, we will have Markerville um, June 17th participation, Icelandic days in Utah, the Calgary Stampede in Calgary. Some years we are able to share Canada Day on June, July 1st, as well as the 4th of July, as they did here in Blaine in 2019. It just depends on each year and, and when things fall. The actual cost of the Snorri West trip is more than what participants pay. Uh, participants will pay about 2,500 US dollars in 2022. And the program relies heavily on all of you in North America to act as local organizers, hosts, guides, transportation, lodging, board, and assistance to meet local relatives. All of your monetary and in-kind donations help us keep the costs of the program reasonable, which makes it a big draw for the young Icelanders. Local clubs and organizations receive approximately a $35 US dollar per day per participant stipend to offset the costs of hosting the participants while in their area. A wide variety of accommodations are used. Here you see a private home, but they also use vacation rentals, university housing, local heritage facilities, and even some camping. Likewise, food is also a wide variety of offerings from private meals with host families, community gatherings, providing groceries for participants to make their own breakfasts and lunches. Here is the 2018 group while they picnic in Nova Scotia during one of the day trips around the island. While activities are naturally related to sharing the story of Western Icelanders, it is also important to expose participants to the wonder of your local area. Here you see the 2018 group at the uh, Lincoln Memorial in Washington, DC. The hardest thing for local organizers is not to pack too much into the itinerary. One day per week is reserved as a free day for participants to do as they choose. Do laundry, see the sites, do individual activities, visit families, or do absolutely nothing at all. I recall a surprise to me 
when I was hosting the 2016 group here in Minnesota, we had a storm that interfered with the planned activities of the day. And when I asked them what they'd like to do instead, the unanimous reply was go to Walmart. Quite a surprise. While we Western Icelanders have so much to share, the free day is very important. Imagine yourself speaking a foreign language 24 hours a day, seven days a week, sleeping in different beds every few days, living out of a suitcase for a month, and trying to be pleasantly sociable at all times. It is exhausting, and it's very important to provide that downtime for them. Additionally, identifying and meeting relatives is one of the highlights that differentiates Snorri West from programs uh, for other young people. We rely heavily on Icelandic roots for a genealogical assistance, not only through their database, but also with their vast network of members and volunteers. Meeting, interacting, and just plain hanging out with other young people also sets Snorri West apart from other programs for young people. We try very hard to plan joint activities that include both Snorri and Snorri Plus participants, both in Iceland and in North America, depending upon how the itinerary allows it. During many years, this is usually includes a combined graduation ceremony. In addition, we strongly encourage Snorri alumni to get involved with Snorri West when the program visits their area. A program you may not have heard about is Snorri Deaf. Beginning in 2018, the Icelandic National League of North America, Icelandic Roots, and the Snorri Foundation supported a program for the deaf and hard of hearing Icelanders and Western Icelanders. That program is now overseen by the Deaf Association in Iceland, Icelandic Roots, and the Icelandic National League of the United States on an as needed basis. Last year, when we suddenly had a gap in our schedule because of COVID, we used the time to look at our website, snorri.is, and think of things to improve. One of the items we are most excited about on our newly redesigned website is the online application form, which can be started, paused, and completed at various times, as well as submitted directly, all through the website. Another exciting new feature is our extensive FIQ section on all of our programs. For the first time, Snorri West was translated to Icelandic on the website for our Icelandic target group. We believe that this, these changes, updates and work will help the Snorri programs to grow and develop. We hope these changes have made the website more customer friendly. And this is, of course, uh, constant work and in progress as we speak. I also want to mention that our website, snorri.is, has a lot of important and helpful information in all of our programs. We can't mention them all here, unfortunately, but perhaps it's worth mentioning that we have a list of grants and scholarships that are available for Snorri participants. More information and how to apply for them are available there as well. You've just barely scratched the surface of the Snorri programs. We invite you to check out our website, to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to contact us. The last two years has been unusual and challenging for everyone. The safety and health of our participants and organizers are of the utmost importance to us while we continue to plan and prepare for our programs. We are optimistic for 2022 and expect all our programs to take place. But during these special times, however, we may be forced to modify and adapt our usual routine to meet the current circumstances. I think all of us are getting pretty used to making a plan and then changing it, modifying it, or canceling it as COVID times require. Many people are traveling all over. The three of us have gone on a number of trips in recent months without problems. And a reminder, however, that is, that is, is every traveler's own responsibility and decision to determine their comfort level of going abroad. Like we have said, we monitor the situation in North America and Iceland closely. But we believe it is necessary to make it mandatory to be fully vaccinated to participate in our SNORI programs. And we look forward to welcoming you as a participant 
hosts and supporters of one or more of our Snorri programs and appreciate input and look forward to hearing from you with comments, thoughts, ideas and suggestions now and in the future. Who will begin sharing today? All right, well, we do have um, a question that has come in. Um, are the host families in Iceland compensated for housing a Snorri participant? Well, it, de it depends, not, no, not like, mm, it has not been part of the program, but it is like a small stipend has been giving and um, of course appreciation and, and like we have not been able to do this for the past, past 20 years without their, you know, with their help and uh, welcoming, you know, Icelandic descents in their homes. Um, it is so important to us and we are so grateful for them. And, and, you know, I have heard so many stories of participants after their homestays and like, you know, they, they still, you know, hear from them. They still keep in contact. This is a very, you know, very important and, um, just amazing thing about this program that this um, is welcoming of the homestay. So how do the families respond to this opportunity? Is there a difference um, when you first approach them and ask if they would like to have uh, someone stay with them versus after the, after the fact, have they, have they gone through uh, uh, any changes? Uh, you mean like um, any changes in the last twenty years, or just during the stay, or um, just during the stay? Are they are they a little um, hesitant at first? Do you have any hesitation from some families to have uh, people uh, that they don't really know come and stay with them? Um, yes, I mean yes. Uh, usually, it takes like uh, they think to think they have to think about it. So usually you you approach them and and ask them how how they feel about this and they have to like maybe take a moment and speak to their family and and get back to you. So this this is usually a process and like and uh, and they want to know of course a little bit about about the about the participant and and it's um uh, the project manager is always in a close uh, relationship or contact with the homestay families. But, um, you know, uh, I think like 98% of the times things have gone like very smoothly and without any problems. But of course, like, you know, um, humans and like uh, relationships and, you know, like, but I am there, project managers there 24-7 to, you know, be of any assistance or help if anything comes up or, you know, if, something happens of course something can always happen also in the homestay family just a personal matter so you know we are we are there to uh, uh, help them and support them and, and response if, if anything happens i'd also like to point out that we have uh, a number of host families who have hosted more than one snorri um, they've enjoyed the process so much that they've uh, willingly signed up additional years Okay, wonderful. Um, well, and we have another question this time about Snorri West. Uh, so in the Snorri West program, is it common for applicants to be around the same age or do you try to keep it more diverse? And do you have any, any advice on leaving a sufficient application? As far as Snorri West goes, uh, as long as the participant is at least 20 years old and uh, no more than 30, uh, we don't really tend to try to look at age particularly. Um, if we have a large number, a pool of participants uh, who have applied, uh, we may look at how they appear to work together. Uh, sometimes we um, have to examine where or what type of homestays or stays there will be so that we keep in mind um, the genders. Um, most people don't want to uh, bunk with uh, somebody of the opposite gender. Um, so otherwise there really isn't much um, 
other than whether or not we feel that person is mature enough, um, is willing to, uh, some people think of the program as more just an opportunity to get to North America. And that they, once they're there, there are ideas that they're going to be off on their own doing whatever they want. And that's not the, the, the aim of the programs. And so we're looking for someone who is, is truly interested in the story of the Western Icelanders and connecting with Western Icelanders and uh, who will be willing to uh, go along on the itinerary as it is planned. Um, so the second part of the question, Diane, could you remind me what that was? It, how uh, do you have any advice for uh, uh, submitting a sufficient application? Do you have, is there anything that they can put on their application that's going to uh, maybe up them in the priority list? For Snorri West, uh, just answer the questions fully and honestly. Um, they do go through an interview process as well after the applications are submitted. So uh, that's our opportunity to get to know them a little bit more up close and personal. Uh, they do, uh, if at all possible, we invite them into our office in, in Reykjavik. Otherwise we can do a, a Zoom uh, interview, but um, we do try to spend some time getting to know the applicants before we make our decision as to who to take along on the, the trip. Maybe Paula, how, sorry. Sorry, mm -hmm. uh, go ahead, Jody. I was just yeah. going to say maybe Paula has some things that she uh, could suggest for the Snorri Plus and Snorri West or Snorri uh, programs applications. Well, um, well, yeah. I mean, it's. Um, uh, I think just just like Jody mentioned. I think first of all, answer the um, answer the questions as honestly as you can, and. Um, giving idea what you expect of the program, like um, if you have any idea what it's, uh, what it's about or like um, what your expectations are. And um, I think that goes also for Snorri West, um, that uh, it's um, always, always better that you know if, if the person is aware of what the program is about. And like, you know, it's um, um, the more information, the better, like of, Icelandic uh, descent, like a uh, family tree information, anything you can tell us about your interest or your family's history of, in Iceland, that's, um, that's something that uh, is very good in the application as well. And just, uh, yeah, um, I think like for all of these programs, you have to be open-minded, you have to be willing to Go out of your comfort zone. Um, be willing to get to know a lot of lot of different people. Um, learn, um, explore. Maybe get a little culture shock. You know, this is just part of like that. We, you know, I think like you have to be open to, you know, open to new experiences and um, uh, and be maybe curious. Um, in general. So yeah, that's uh, at least what I can think of at the moment. If I think of something else, I will add it. <laughs> Perfect. So how do uh, young Icelanders find out about Snorri West and how many tend to apply each year? Well, I guess I'll start with that. Um, the majority of the promotion rests with Paula in Iceland. Uh, not only does she speak Icelandic, which is uh, very important, uh, obviously, she has the connections. Um, one of the ways most recently in November that she participated, or I should say representatives of Snorri West participated in the International Festival Days at Hoskoli Island, the University of Iceland. And that's an opportunity for all kinds of different programs, um, both educational and um, job related and just travel opportunities to explore expose the students at House School Eastlands uh, to their opportunities. Um, there are radio programs, there are uh, newspaper interviews. Um, more and more we can do the Zoom uh, activities, which help quite a bit. Uh, word of mouth. Um, hold on just a second. <laughs> so, um, she also um, sends um, notices to the local uh, programs at other universities within Iceland. Uh, Paula, perhaps you can expand on how you mm -hmm. share the information. Yeah, I, um, I've sent to the uh, international offices of all the, um, 
all the universities in Iceland and um, for all of them except Háskóli Íslands, which is not sending out like um, uh, brochures anymore, like to all uh, students, um, they have sent out like information about the program and like a brochure about like uh, what it's about to all of the students. That is also what we have done for the high schools um, in Iceland and um, like a Jody mentioned, um, we go to radio interviews and usually we set it up that we have a participant and uh, perhaps myself um, as well, like go and, uh, and ex explain and talk about the program and then perhaps a participant can add like, a, you know, their own story uh, to it. And, um, um, and also like it's important to like use social media. Uh, social media and uh, website and just um, getting the word out is uh, is important and and we have just uh, we've used also you know resources here like um, the Nordic Association newsletter and the uh, National uh, League of Iceland Thorakmus uh, Fjallaget so I mean we are just um, and 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 also like to mention that we are in cooperation or like especially Theoretics Fjall with a um Framal School in Olaugum, or there is a course there about like uh, the Western Icelander that is one high school um in the countryside. And that person there is uh, very interested in, in 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 this history and had a special course just about like uh um, Western Icelanders and I think like uh, finding some kind of aim in that as well like this is the people that you know would be uh, very very appropriate for you know for participants and, and Snorri West so it's um, it's in many ways that we um, reach Icelandic uh, Icelandic young young people to try to apply and uh, get interested in, in Snorri West. And we would uh, welcome any suggestions that anybody has in Iceland as to how to reach out and, and get the word out about them. Mm -hmm. um, you asked about how many people uh, apply each year. It varies tremendously. Mm -hmm. uh, the last two years, we actually, well, let's see, in 2020, um, I think we had 10. Um, and last year, we never got to that point. Uh, we we decided that we had to cancel the program prior to um, the application deadline and uh, interviews. Um, most of the people who were accepted in 2020 have chosen to carry over. They were going to go in 2021 and they have decided they will try again in 2022, but we'll see. Um, so we are deadline for Snorri West this year, uh, or I should say next year is uh, February 21st. So we won't know how many participants or how many applicants until that time. And also maybe I can add to that is uh, Snorri and Snorri Plus is January 17th of next year of mm -hmm. 2022. And okay. if there's any if there's any Snorri's listening, uh, today's the deadline for the Snorri internship application. Mm -hmm. So get that in. <laughs> Do most of the people that apply for Snorri or Snorri Plus get accepted or is it, uh, does it get a little competitive? Um, and especially since uh, COVID has, you know, canceled the last two years, are you putting a cap of any type or a maximum number of, of participants uh, in this upcoming year? Um, well, uh... I know that um, they have had to in the uh, just in the last twenty years. Sometimes they have had to waitlist some people if um, um, there's a little bit too many that apply. And um, uh, and this year uh, we we will will aim for like fifteen to twenty people in each program. Um, and um, and that is um, yeah, that is just. Um, I th we think it's important to not, you know, expand it anymore. Like that uh, keeps its uniqueness and and uh, closeness of of the program. But um, we, of course, might have to modify things or like have some alternatives um, if there is a lot of demand or like a lot of people that have applied. Um, it has been like there, there there has been like quite 
or few uh, applications, new applications in both of the programs already. And we have participants from 2020 and 2021. <laughs> So we'll see, you know, um, we're, of course, just very glad and, and, and thankful that um, participants are so understanding of uh, our situation and um, patience, <laughs> patient to, uh, you know, wait until we can finally welcome our Snorri participants. But um, uh, I think like in general, I have at least not heard that it's competitive, but you know, we might have to, you know, might we might have to do some waitlisting, but we'll see. It's uh, nothing that has been decided or we are, you know, thinking about at the moment. We're just very thankful for the applications and excited about next year. Do you have any idea at this point what the cost is going to be for Snorri and Snorri Plus? Um, the Snorri. Uh, the Snorri cost is going to be uh, 6,000 US dollars for the whole program. And that includes everything. I mean, it includes like um, uh, the, uh, the flight fare as well and accommodation, of course, and lectures and, and just uh, the uh, adventure trip and, um, and travel in Iceland uh, between places. So it's uh, basically, basically covers all of, all of the trip. Um, and you can see, of course, uh, very closely what is, um, you know, part of the program in our website. Uh, the Snorri Plus, last year it was um, for, uh, it was a little bit different if you're um, a single or a double, but it's a very similar, it's a, you know, it was about uh, 6,000 US dollars. Um, but a little bit, if you are sharing room, um, it is a little bit not, not, not as expensive. And a reminder that we do have quite a few uh, opportunities for grants and scholarships, especially for the Snorri programs, uh, mm -hmm. and those are all available on the website. Mm -hmm. And yes. that is like, yeah, the, there is scholarship for both, I mean, Snorri participants, but there have also been some, some, uh, grants that have been given to Snorri Plus as well. Mm -hmm. And we can guide you or, or try to like uh, help as much as we can um, covering the cost or, you know, uh, guide you to some grants and scholarships. And one of those would be from the INL US as mm -hmm. well as Icelandic Roots. So um, I'm sure that information is all available online. Um, so we have, uh, covered all the questions that have come in. Do you have any closing comments, Paula or, or Jody? I'll let you go first, Paula. Uh, no, I just wanted to mention like maybe just, uh, you know, uh, we are um, we are pretty sure that the cost for Snorri Plus is gonna be the same as 2021. So like uh, that's gonna be 5,200 US dollar for, for um, um, sharing rooms and 6,100 for a for a, a single one. So I just wanted to clear that out. Like, um, and in general, um, we are just very happy to be here uh, sharing the Snorri programs, what it's all about. And um, uh, it's, such a, it's such a wonderful programs. It's so, so great to be part of it. And, and um, I know all of us are looking forward to getting you know, our lives back to normal and um, we are very hopeful for next year. Diori, is it? I just wanted to uh, also follow along what Paula said. I had been to Iceland many times prior to my experience with Snorri Plus, and I just cannot explain how connected I felt to the country and how much of an impact that made on my life. Um, I encouraged both my kids to go on the Snorri programs. One of whom was able to do so and and uh, eventually ended up moving to Iceland, getting a, a second degree from the university there. She's now living and has a family there. Um, it's just um, just amazing the difference between being a tourist in Iceland with yourself or another organization and going with the Snorri or organization. Um, being a snorri, it's it's different, and I think the connectedness it brings um, to your heritage is is just amazing. 
So, um, and as far as Western Icelanders, uh, anytime we come calling, I encourage you, please uh, jump in and get involved with Snorri West. Um, we'll be ramping that uh, itinerary planning up soon. So uh, if you're in the central corridor, we look forward to your participation. Thank you so much, Diane and the INL US uh, for allowing us to share this information with you. Well, thank and I just you. have to say, oh. say the same. Thank you. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to also thank you so much for having us and and just say that um, I am just so, so grateful to be working in such a wonderful, um, heart giving program. And uh, thank you for offering us to uh, talk about it here, Diane. Well, and I thank you advice. for all for all the information. This has been very good. Um, and I really and truly hope that the programs go forward in 2022. <laughs> um, I, I just applaud all the people who applied in 2020 uh, and 2021 and are still, you know, waiting in line to to go in 2022. I think it it speaks loudly for the uh, the integrity of the program and uh, and the benefits that are gained. Um, so again, the applications for Snorri and Snorri Plus are um, due in January and Snorri West in February. The application forms and all the information that you need can be found on the Snorri website, which is snorri, S-N-O-R-R-I dot I-S. And we also have a link on the INL US website. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to mention that the INL US's December newsletter will be coming out soon. And besides all the information that you'll that you usually find in it, there will also be a uh, uh, a little blurb or a little ad on a discount for new subscriptions from the Logberg Heimskringla newspaper, uh, effective through the end of December. Uh, the LH is the only remaining continuously published North American Icelandic newspaper, uh, and your support is is very much appreciated. Um, Again, this is, this is our last uh, webinar that we have planned for 2021. Uh, I just want to thank everyone who has supported the INL US for these past two years. And I'm looking forward to uh, the continued growth of the organization as well as our offerings. Uh, we welcome any ideas that you have, any um, volunteering that you'd like to do would be much appreciated. But most of all, I wish everyone a very safe, happy and healthy holiday season. Thank you all for joining us today and goodbye.